Hey everybody, it's Trigger Bar Philosopher back out at the range. Today we're going to be taking another look at this AAC 5.7 by 28 ammunition. Today we're going to be shooting it out of the PSA Rock and the MMP 5.7. Got the lab radar set up and we'll see what this ammo can do. Okay, so in a previous video, I tested some of this ammunition with some case gauge checks and talked about how whether it fits or not in the barrel of the PSA rock. And, and I did some testing early on to show that it actually runs and, and should run just fine. But now I really just want to put it through its paces, put it through the lab radar, test it with the MMP 5.7. So that's what we're going to start off with is we're going to be shooting about eight rounds to the PSA rock and about eight rounds to the MMP 5.7. And we're going to see how what results we can get from this lab radar and, and how AAC ammunition is doing and, and loading this as a spicier lame type round. So let's get going. I'll load up the rounds and, and let's move it. Okay, so I have eight rounds loaded up in the in the 5.7 or the MMP 5.7. I've got eight rounds lined up in the rock, and let's shoot the MMP first. See how it goes. That magazine tight enough. Let's see how it goes. Seventeen seventy, not bad for a forty grain bullet and really cheap ammo. I've seen the American Eagle do a lot worse than that. 1753, 1712, 1725, 1720, 1763, 1710, and 1697. So let's see what we got for an add up. So for our average, we got 1735, high of 1770, low of 1697, standard deviation of 23.28.3, and number of shots, eight. So not bad, not bad. And I'll flash up what the energy foot pounds are. Okay, so next up I have the rock. And let's remember that the rock is shooting a 5.25 inch barrel. And I think the MMP 5.7 is something like a 4.7 Something like that, so it's almost a half an inch longer in the in the barrel length, and uh, so we do tend to get higher velocities in the rock. So as we shoot that, let's remember that, and nobody freak out about you know, you know whatever whatever one's superior, or whatever. Um, we have other videos on that, so just lining it up, and let's get to shooting. Get to shooting. Eighteen fifty seven. 1793, 1760, 1771, 1752, 1793, 1735, and 1795. I think that first one, I don't know what happened with that, but that 1897, you know, for, for the first one was really weird. I don't know, you know, just one round. I don't know what was going on with it, but that was way out of uh, spec with the rest of it. Don't think it's a lab radar. Actually, it was the high was 1857. So extreme spread of 123. So let's take a quick look. So the average was 1782 and the high of 1857, low of 1735, standard deviation of 37.5 and number of shots, eight. Okay, next up, we're going to do a little bit of testing that I like to do with ammunition and with my ham guns. It's just text, test the practical accuracy. From the comment section, it appears many of you don't like it when I do it this way. Many of you say I should be testing it on a bench rest if I'm going to test accuracy. But what I like to test is how can I shoot a handgun standing and be accurate with it? And, and is that impacted by the ammunition that I'm using? You may say it's an invalid test, but I find it interesting. So it's something I'm going to continue to do because that's why I do this channel. So first up, I'm going to shoot the target on the right with this MMP 5.7. I've got 15 rounds loaded in because I do want to test just a little bit of functionality with this. Get enough rounds downrange with this ammunition and, and just test to make sure that it's functioning with my guns.
All right, so we shot the M&P, 15 rounds. I am getting a little shaky after doing it, even with this with this lightweight cartridge and got a glare. These are all my excuses that I'm laying out for when we go down and we see it's not a great group, but uh, there definitely is a glare from here and I get a little bit tired and you see probably saw me wavering just a little bit. And so is what it is and, and that'll be the, the, the judgment that we give. I gotta make sure I put the mags in the right in the right gun. Next up, we got the rock, and we shoot the target on the left. All right, let's go down and see what each of these did. Okay, so am I right? There is some glare on this, all right, so whatever. Um, that's the 15 rounds we did with the M&P, all fit within the size of a palm. It's 15 rounds we did with the rock, just a little bit bigger group, but all fits it within the size of, of the hand, not bad. You know, certainly these guns are not zeroed for this ammunition until the group may be a little bit lower so I could definitely shift it up and could shift it up into the right a little bit over here maybe to up into the left over here but you know I would say that's pretty uh, pretty good accuracy uh, with this ammunition I'm definitely happy with it I think this is a strong contender for range ammunition Okay, so we have the add up slide here. Let's just talk about the results. You can see down at the bottom of the add ups is what the ammunition we were talking about and shooting today. It's the AAC 40 grain FMJ. And we have here listed at the bottom where we look at the MMP 57 and the PSA rock out of the 5.2 inch barrel. And we see that our average velocities off, are off by about 50 feet per second, which is I've seen between 30 and 50 feet per second between the M&P and the rock. And that's pretty normal because of the extra half inch of barrel length, candidly. I think that most of it can be attributed to that maybe could be attributed some to the gas system. I actually think it's just mostly barrel length. So, but when we look at these two things and we compare it to what I consider other range ammo, meaning you can get it for under a dollar a round. And, and these are all the, the listings that I have seen in that category. So if we go from the top to the bottom, it's Federal American Eagle 40 grain FMJ. We also have the other PSA ammunition in 5.7 by 28. It's the 40 grain VMAX. Fioki recently also came out with a range dynamics. Unfortunately, I don't have a recording or at least something that I could find in my charts, the data for the MMP. So I may have to go out and shoot that again because I actually think the range dynamics is a very good round as well. But what we're seeing here is that the AAC is significantly higher. And for range ammunition, that's not bad. Again, I would like to see the energy foot pounds well above 300 and the velocities above 1800, 1850 on these 40 grain. And then as you get into lighter, certainly even more significantly up above 2000 for some of the lighter grain projectiles for self-defense and personal protection ammunition. But that's not really what we're talking about today. We're talking about, is this a good cheap round for you to buy to go plank with? I think even though I have had some problems with a rock, and I didn't show it on this video, but after filming this video, I shot the remainder of my 50 rounds, and I did get a failure to feed on one of the rounds. Exactly what I was talking about in one of my previous videos that I have linked is that there are some chambering issues with the rock and the AAC ammunition. It doesn't. It's not every time you may shoot dozen, you know, a couple, not dozens, but several boxes full, and then eventually you'll run into the issue where you will get some type of malfunction. Again, for range ammunition, is that acceptable? Absolutely, we're talking one round out of two boxes. So for me, the 1%, less than 1% is what I've experienced overall in total with the AAC ammunition. I think that's fine. I'm just not gonna bank my life on it. I'm gonna go to the range and shoot it because it's a lot cheaper than any other round. Uh, certainly, that is something that I wanna be uh, doing is practicing with something that's not gonna kill me and break my bank account. So let me know what you think. What do you think about this new AAC FMJ ammunition? 1,700, almost close to 1,800 feet per second, getting up over 250 energy foot-pounds, getting close to 300. Is this range ammunition that you would like to purchase? Uh, do you do your own hand loads? Would you only rely on the Fiocchi? 
Well, you know, just let me know what you're thinking about this ammunition and make sure that you uh, please hit that subscribe button. For those of you that have lasted this long with me, I appreciate your support and please like, share and subscribe. Thank you.